I expect that we will be talking about also the success achieved by Muslim countries like Iran and Bangladesh. How did they achieve that? Why couldn't we achieve it? Both countries are careful about their resources. And yet there was something that they did which managed to receive success. And today, I believe, they are reversing their policies. And I, I am thrilled now to discover from Mr. Luab that the narrative today is not population control. It is a concern for the population to be productive so that they can earn their livelihood and contribute to the society and the community. And for that, the requirement is education. But what we need to understand is how will those goals be achieved? We can't just leave it to the state. The state is already committed with its resources to so many other important priorities. There has to be some other vehicle, some other means of achieving that. I would submit that it's not talked very often about we just impose things on the government, expect them to do everything. We have to involve the community. We have to involve society in contributing. If you recall <coughs> the verse from the Holy Quran which was read by Maulana Sahib, it talks about a Muslim's fondness for his wealth and money. It acknowledges that, but it says you must contribute for the poor, for the needy, for those who need help. And above all, in fact, right at the beginning, your relatives. Islam strengthens the bond of the family. We need to reawaken those values. We have become concerned about individualism, about ourselves only. Only a generation ago, all of us, or most of us would remember that our elders were either supporting or were supported by relatives to get educated. I can say that for my elders. And that was the way forward. What has happened today? But this are all that I'm trying to emphasize is that when we build, bring in people, into the matrix that will be interacting with society and giving them education, giving them skill-based education, empowering them, it will be then that we will see the fruits in other forms which is managed families, spacing, choices being exercised, women being respected, that is the process that will take place. The, it is not for the law to enforce that. And this is not a legal forum also. Yes, if there are solutions before us, which are in black and white, we can evaluate their relevance, or their propriety, or their sufficiency for addressing an issue of rights, or the enforcement of rights. But we cannot devise these solutions. It will be people like yourselves who will have to come forward. The time today requires the people of Pakistan to come forward and solve the, and, and to offer solutions to the state. If you remember, you will not remember because I don't expect any one of you to have been around in 1947, but we have all read that in 1947 when this country was formed, 
It had no finances. The partition of India had resulted in no finances being given to us. And do you know who funded the country? It was all private funds. And within four years, I read that Pakistan was giving a loan to Germany. In 1971, I read somewhere that Pakistan gave a loan to China. Why? How, did, how was it accomplished? It was accomplished because the people of Pakistan felt responsible. Do you know that there was a time when simplicity and thrift were respected? Today, we take pride in extravagance. Our elite leads us in that direction. I think the first step towards contributing to a cause is to become simple yourself. Your personal simplicity generates the surplus to contribute to that cause. We need community service, community, community involvement, and that's how through a public-private partnership, I think, in my humble estimation, the issues can be tackled. We must bring in education and particularly vocational training and skill-based education. In my youth, I remember <clears throat> when we traveled from Lahore to Peshawar, there were at least two dozen vocational training centers on the highway. Today we see none. Where have they gone? You see, these are things we must go back to the simple solutions. And our lives and our requirements and needs must be simplified. I don't want to give examples of where as a citizen, I feel waste is taking place because that is unnecessary. It's an attitude we must adopt. And I think that during the course of today and tomorrow, inshallah, we will find suggestions that will be useful. These are suggestions, as far as I'm concerned, which will occupy my mind and generate ideas, ideas on how I have to protect rights of the people who come to us. If we have one job, and for that there are a thousand applicants. And do you know, litigation comes up right up to the Supreme Court for how those jobs are to be uh, assigned or allocated or, or, hand, or, or uh, uh, given to applicants.